And we should be live, hopefully. Possibly, maybe. I, I posted. I actually posted what was going on. It took me a minute. Fuck. Dinner took longer to make. It's because I had to cut off everything. So I made a... I forget what it's actually called, but it's essentially a cabbage... Cabbage stew. It's got... Uh, vegan bratwurst sausage cut up and fried, and then you do onions, and then you do garlic, and then you do some mild seasoning, and then you do cabbage, and you cook that down in steps, and then you deglaze with beer, specifically Guinness. You let that cook down for a few minutes, and then you add in some potatoes that were peeled and cubed, and then you add in some ch uh, vegan chicken stock. It actually looks really good. Because I'm not catering to your schedule, sir. I'm catering to my own schedule, you fool. One thing that I did set up, though. Wait, let me check. Let me do the thing. Uh, okay, so now. Now. Now when I'm not on screen. <laughs> when you guys redeem stuff that throws things at me. You guys are going to get hit. Yeah. Y'all will get hit. And then when it's just me, I will just get hit. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. Ow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's specifically for... I gotta tweak it some more, but for right now, that is specifically for... Ow, what the fuck? That's when I'm not here, or... When I'm not on stream. When you can't see my beautiful bony form. <laughs> Doo -doo 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 -doo. I'm going to be going through and redoing the um, just chatting. Just chatting playlist. I went ahead and also set up a thing in the Discord where you guys can suggest songs. Specifically going through Spotify. I, didn't, I know I didn't clarify that right at first. But I fixed it as soon as I checked back in the Discord and saw people shared. Uh... I use Spotify mainly when I'm doing stuff for background music, at least right now. So I'd only be able to use stuff from Spotify. At least for right now. I will figure out... <laughs> what the hell? The story of Undertale House Fire lip sync video. What? There's a lot of cursed shit on Spotify, so I don't think that'll hinder it too much. And like I said, that's for right now. I want to, like, explore what my other options are with the program that I currently use. Right now, it's just easier. I can lock it in on specifically Spotify uh, to get rid of DMCA stuff. Because the way it works is I have all of my alerts set up, or an easy explanation for how it works is I have all my alerts set up through one um, audio source. So I can I can choose to make that play or not play. I have the desktop, which is the main one you guys hear for like videos and stuff, and then I have another one specifically just for Spotify. So I have to mute the desktop when I play Spotify, and then people in the VOD don't 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 hear the Spotify because of the actual program itself to protect me and my channel from uh, copyright strikes. What the hell? What the hell? I got an alert through Twitch for TwitchCon. So sad. Not happening. Can't happen. I feel like you should hit a certain number count before you go to TwitchCon. Unless. Oh, what the hell? That is full ass cheeks. What the fuck? <laughs> Yo! See, what's with everyone getting ass, bro? I fucking get recommended titty channels. Straight up just tits. Which is fine. I love tits. But, like, <laughs> it's funny. Why is the diddler trending in the United States? <laughs> Hold up. Hold up. Wait a minute. Why is the... Huh? Oh, a raid? Oh, it's a raid. That's why. 
P. Diddy's Los Angeles uh, home being raided by government for underage sex trafficking charges? What? <laughs> Is this the end of the diddler? What the fuck? Yeah, I noticed that. I thought that's what you were pointing out at first, and I just saw full ass. Because it's the very bottom. <laughs> what the fuck? This is why I don't like going on X. I don't like it. It makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So we're going to be looking at the case of James Holmes. I already kind of gave like a mini warning at the end of last stream when I was talking about it, but specifically um, uh, shooting in a theater during a Batman movie premiere it was a big deal. I mean, it was I, it's shooting in a theater. It was, of course, a big deal. But like, it's going to show actual footage from the cameras in the theater. It's going to play 911 calls. What the hell? There's plenty of other places you can go for the horny. What the hell, man? But that's your warning. It's going to probably be, be kind of intense because you're going to have that in one calls. There's interviews with family members of the victims, I think, and also of the actual shooter. Uh, but it's basically a walkthrough of what happened, what we know about why it happened, that kind of thing. It's it's essentially a documentary. So it's an hour and a half. That's why it's the only thing that I have planned because I figure if I have to pause it, then we're still good. It's fine. It's okay. Hey, wizard. How are you doing? But yeah, so if that, that seems too intense for you, then leave because I know that... Well, yeah, that's the whole point, zombie. I know that there are some followers that I have that are not cool with like 911 calls and other things, which is totally valid and totally fine. I get it. It can be very intense and it can be a lot. It can be triggering on like a bunch of different levels. Yeah, that's what I do. You fool. Aw. This is not okay. Couples counseling right now. <laughs> Let me, uh, uh, there we go. Let me get rid of that. Let's get the desktop audio going. Yeah, boy. You can't say no to the goat. The goat himself. Okay. So this should, there you go. This is by Iwu. It'll say it'll say it because it has the team of whatever. But this is off of this is downloaded, so you don't have to worry about ads. I'm actually doing the thing now, <laughs> so no ads. Um, I'd I'd recommend checking out the channel if you like true crime because they do a ton of stuff. There's a bunch of side channels, including specifically for body cams. I think there's one now for like nine one one calls or some shit. Like if you're interested in anything having to do with true crime, I would recommend any of the Ewu channels, uh, because they're just good. I'm going to turn it down for me because I know for a fact this shit's going to be loud. Guys, warning. Hello, 911. Where's your emergency? Oh, yeah, that's loud. Uh, I can't hear you. What address? Aurora. Aurora. I can't hear you. Give me the address again. Dude. What address? Ooh. Ooh. You guys gotta tell me if I gotta turn that shit, this shit up. At midnight of July 20th, 2012, a wave of excitement amongst the moviegoers at the Century 16 Theater in Colorado turned into horror when an unexpected assailant attacked them. Yeah, explore with. A merciless hail explore of bullets with us is the, the name of the channel. Um, get down and stay down. There's a man in the movie theater shooting people. You could hear the bullets hitting people. You could hear the screams and just. You know, it was just right? so fucking, And I remember when this shit was up. unfolding. Like, I fucking remember when... The, I, granted, I don't live super close to it, but it made enough national, like, news that even as it was happening, like, god, I remember that. You don't remember at all? What the fuck? What the hell? It was, like, a whole thing. Because, again, and I, t I touched up on this, like, when I was talking about it towards the very end of the last stream where I was recapping that we were going to be doing this. I think what makes this one a little more unique, <laughs> as sad as it is to say, for a U.S. case, it's not a shooting in a school. A lot of uh, U.S. cases, especially the ones that actually get big news coverage, tend to be school shootings. 
So to have something happen in an area like that is nuts. And yes, there's been shootings in like grocery stores and other things, but I, for me, it's that extra level of as sad as it is, a lot of people who go into school know there's a possibility that this might happen. There's drills that occur, and there's other things that occur because it is an unfortunate situation that we find ourselves in where school shootings are somewhat regular to a certain degree. But I don't think anyone generally goes into a movie theater thinking there's a possibility that that shit's going to get shot up. Like, I just don't think that's going, that that's that running through your mind at all. Hello, Finn. So I think that's what makes this one a little more unique in the aspect of, like, this happened in a fucking movie theater. People were excited to see a movie. They were in a dark movie theater, and someone decided they were going to shoot up the place. Like, what? And I'm not a fan of, like, covering any shootings because, again, a lot of them tend to be school shooting situations. And I have very specific views on how gun laws should kind of be restricted and tightened down and things should be limited. And, yeah. Comprehend the unfolding Ugh. tragedy. A disturbing discovery looms in a nearby neighborhood. A potential new threat has been set up to claim even more innocent oy, oy, oy. lives. Shockingly so, the details surrounding the... <laughs> I love that they show just the blurred images. I know that they can't show because this is on YouTube, so they can't just show certain things, and I get it. But like, what the fuck? It's grim as hell. But like, that's the situation we're in. Uh, I think the last shooting that technically we looked at for true crime night, it wasn't like a full deep dive, but it was a look at the actual individual who perpetrated the crime. Uh, was a school shooting because again, if you look at most cases that get like crazy coverage and if you look at probably the most common cases in the US at least from my experience looking at these cases it tends to be school shooting cases it doesn't tend to happen in other areas you have the occasional like supermarket situation or like targeted towards a specific place for specific reasons but overall across the board it seems like more shootings in the US happen at schools than any place else calculated planning of these brutal attacks Lie within the pages of a red book locked away in a university mail. Insights room. into the mind of madness. What the hell? All men are uncreated equal? What follows includes never before seen exclusive interviews with survivors, first responders, and family members affected by one of America's most horrific shootings. We will also hear from the killer himself. And get a rare glimpse into oh, the mind shit. of a mass murderer. Late on a quiet Friday night, the Aurora Police Department. I didn't know this was actually going to have stuff call. with the actual shooter. At 12:38 a.m., 911 emergency services receive a bone-chilling report about a shooter who had Jesus. invaded the Century 16 Theater in Aurora, Colorado. After storming into one of the auditorium, I think the saddest thing that I remember from seeing like coverage of this, other than just you, you can see the fear. And the fucking anger and the grief in the survivors' faces and the family members trying to get to their- to see who's alive and, like, what's going on in the madness of the situation. And I feel like that's a lot of shooting situations in general when you're talking about, like, public shooting incidents. But, like, it was a mixture of that and it was- so, <sighs> the news was able to interview survivors, some survivors, relatively quickly after it happened because that's what the news does. And- I remember a couple of the survivors specifically saying, like, people who were either in that same theater or were in the, like, in that actual room where the shooting happened or were in the theater in general that were just like, we didn't know if it was part of a show. We didn't know if it was part of the movie at first because you're dealing with a darker movie. So they were just confused at first because what the fuck? He'd started unleashing a volley of kid. What the hell? Plunging the theater into utter chaos. How goes things other than this shooting video? Uh, pretty good. I made dinner. The initial Today's been pretty call. chill. The operators at the 911 emergency made services cabbage faced stew. an overwhelming influx of calls from terrified and injured moviegoers and desperately Moon seeking is making aid. Rye bread to go with. The dispatchers make notes of the distraught individuals, offering reassurance. And like as they every aspect of this, I'd be like, arrive. I would be shitting myself. Either you're in the actual fucking movie theater looking to see a movie either in that same auditorium or in a different one or you're going in for, for another d day at work at your job and this shit happens or you're a first responder like oh uh, oh my god we're 
16, I'm snacking on uh, chocolate right now. Aww. Get food, Spin. Get snacked. I'm not having my dinner until later just because how my food, my, my actual schedule for eating today has been weird. What the hell, son? I, I wonder if it's going to show where the emergency exit was. That's got to be horrifying, too, to be laying there where there's bodies or where there's people actively, like, bleeding out and panicking, and it's like you can't do anything to help. You're terrified for your own life, but, like, you can't even help the people that are, like, five feet in front of you. That fucking sucks. I feel like that's the kind of stuff that'll really fucking stick with you. Because that is fucking trauma. I, unfortunately. As troubling reports of gunshot wounds start flooding in, other callers pinpoint the exact location within the theater where the shooter had opened and fire. And again, it's that like, the swift it's that like, I mean, even in that call, it was just someone going out with their friend for the evening and and hitting fuck it and watching a movie. Like, it was, it's literally just you, you're watching a movie. You're trying to enjoy yourself with friends. This is the last thing that I think anyone would think would even, like, begin to happen. Response of police officers rushing to the scene. I forgot that it was like attached to a mall because everyone because it happened in the actual theater. In a series of exclusive interviews with Iwu. Several survivors provide insight into what transpired. I will say though, the 911, the actual on people on the night. phone that we've heard so far, the 911 operators doing an awesome job, seats. trying to get as much you know, fucking info as possible. Was excited, you know, about being there. Just really loud, and all of a sudden, everybody was clapping, and you know, people in masks and costumes and stuff like that. Just a lot of children, a lot of screams when the you know the previews came on. Cool, because everyone Many is excited. It's a new fucking movie. It's the Batman. Was filled with excitement and wonder for the new Batman movie. So I distinctly remember someone who was very excited, very loud. Uh, he was sitting like behind us to our left. He like stood up and clapped after some of the commercials, and I remember being like, "Oh man, like this is gonna be so loud the whole movie." I remember these two little girls kept like running up all the stairs and running back down, right? Because we were waiting in this movie theater for, you know, two and a half hours waiting for the movie to start. So we go to inside, kind of not too Aww. early to I mean to the front, not too far away. So, kind of in the middle. Oh, I Jesus. Remember That's terrifying, too. Where do you guys normally sit when you go to a movie theater? Because my family always does the midsection. Like, the middle area of a movie theater. And it would suck to be anywhere where there are shootings happening. But I feel like that, I don't know. That would suck. I would want to be in the back rows, bro. I bet a lot of Americans are just scared to go out in public, sadly. Well, that's why I try to emphasize, I don't think anyone really goes to the movie theater, and even after this happened. Like, right after this happened, there was a scare, and there was that, like, sense of fear and paranoia that maybe something will now happen when I go to the theater. But, like, that's why I kind of, like, talked about it the way I talked about it in terms of, like, unfortunately, as sad as it is, you kind of anticipate certain situations, and we have drills and we have exercises and we have conversations that occur around like shootings in school. But we don't tend to have a lot of conversations about shootings in other places to the same degree. And out of anywhere, bro, I would not expect a shooting to happen in a theater. And this fucking hit, this fucking hit because what my parents, like, 
I've already mentioned that me and my family grew up low income. We're still low income. One of the things that my mom and dad would splurge on growing up and still randomly do, I do for my siblings as well because we enjoy it, is when a new, like, especially a comic book movie comes out, like, that's how we were fucking raised. We would usually go and see the movie. So it's just like, God damn. The idea of like, oh, this is going to be a fun day. This is going to be awesome. We're just chilling. We're vibing. We're having fun. And then this shit happens. I always sit right to the side and near the back so I can munch without being annoying. Uh-huh. What the hell, zombie? No. I always sit near the aisle. Yeah. My family always does the um like the middle section of the theater itself. And then when I'm going with friends, because a lot of the people that I know IRL that I do randomly hang out with have the same like sensitivities as me, I'll go more towards the back <laughs> of the theater. <laughs> Some of the loudest people I had during a Purge movie, they were <laughs> making funny-ass comments the whole time. Nice. I was the only person... Who, okay. Was it a child or a parent? <laughs> Zombies just there. <laughs> what the fuck? The right side of my son is a... Uh, I will say, COVID kind of fucked with things when it comes to uh, all that. The guy is to be always fair. asleep. His name is uh, John John Blanc. That's uh, on the right side of my son. So after my son, is you, his mom, and then after her is me. So we are sitting uh, uh, around in the middle of the theater. The situation that time before start, there's a lot of people wearing uh, what we call that uniform, red man. And yeah, woman. and that's the other thing people that they brought so up. You have people yeah, in full cosplay early. because it's exciting. It's the first showing of a movie that is a really like pop culture icon, brother. And I remember playing in the arcade with Veronica, and everywhere you looked, like people were dressed up from head to toe in Batman costumes and Bane costumes, Catwoman, so on and so forth. And it was just a whole community event like it felt like all of the people there were there to have a good time like nobody was there with ill intentions it, it just felt like a community and like this big colorado family of people sharing the same passion for their favorite geeking out girl. they were geeking out man to that i just thought it was so cool that i was 13 and i got to go to this midnight premiere we played <laughs> in the arcade for a little bit and then we ended up going um just to sit down and wait and i remember when we were sitting in our seats, there was a man. I forgot it was a fucking midnight premiere. Up, like every hour, or thirty minutes, I can't remember what it was, but he he would be the time announcer for the whole theater. He would stand up and shout like, "An hour left," or thirty minutes left," and then the whole theater would be like, "Woo!" and clap and whatever. And, <laughs> and then you know, about I would say about ten to fifteen minutes into the movie, a cloud of smoke went across the bottom rows of the theater there and. You know, we're up here in those rows here, and we're right in the middle, so we can see everything. And I looked at Rebecca, and I say, man, someone's trying to ruin this movie. You got to remember, because it was so hot that summer, they didn't have fireworks. And so, therefore, you know, I always stop because, you know, as a youngster, I played pranks with firebombs on buses and stuff. You know, not like that safe, but, you know, I kind of knew <laughs> what it was, so I assumed it Just was kids being kids, man. a little kid doing it, or some kid, you know, playing a prank because it's, you know, the Batman movie. When, when the movie starts, I think the commercial, I saw one person on the first row, first row, but right side, in my right side. That one is already almost dark. That's because they already... Let me do this real quick, because my form is just not wanting to do the things today. Where am I at? Boop. Let me do this real quick. Sorry. I don't know why it's doing this so often. We are just going to not deal with that. That's fine. It's okay. Let me just do this. There you go. You guys can throw stuff at yourselves. I got to see what's going on with that. If stuff needs updating or what. Or almost starting the movie. And then this guy is uh, suddenly standing up. And then throw away something far to my left side. Can you imagine that people is clapping? We well, yeah, because a lot of them thought it was part of the actual experience. The beginning of the movie. Yeah, because it was I it a huge deal. This canister launching from the right side of the theater all the way across like an upward diagonal angle to the left side of the theater. And I 
specifically remember it was like the whole theater like everyone in the theater turned in unison like almost as if we were like programmed to do it like we all turned at the same exact time to watch this thing fly across and land i thought it was just like special effects like someone you know dressed up just having fun but soon a night of fun and entertainment turns into their biggest nightmare as they come to the Jeez. grisly realization of what's happening. I want to know the end count of all the bullets that were used and all in that, because I knew it was ridiculous, but I don't really remember the amount. Loud group was, and people screamed, and I just thought it was like a firework or something, because then the boom started. And John knew immediately what it was, and he pushed me down um, behind the seats in front of us and said, get down and stay down. I was naive. Like, I was so young. In fact, I would say I was fearless, willing to try anything, and I was really outgoing, and I wanted to meet everyone, so I, like, popped my head up over the seats, and I was like, what? Why? Like, I didn't even know why we would be doing this. And Because of the setting, man. Again, I don't think anyone me under anticipates the that, that happening. Been sitting on. So I was, like, really boxed in underneath the seats we were sitting on, and then, like, the you know, the stairs and the ground, and then he was on this side of me, and he, like, gave me a final push and said, um, get down and stay down. There's a man in the movie theater shooting people. I was confused. Like, it didn't sound like a good sound, but at this current time, I still thought it was all props. Like, I thought it was some sort of gimmick for this midnight premiere that somebody thought would be fun. I start looking around and slowly kind of, like, lowering myself as I see people, like, start to panic. And then I turn to my cousin because I watch Ashley, like, basically jump on top of Veronica and drop to the floor. Kaylin is Jameson Toe's cousin and had joined Jeez. him and his girlfriend, Ashley Moser, and her daughter, Veronica, that night. And I'm still confused. I have no idea, like, what's going on. And I turn to my cousin and at the same time, he's standing up at this point, and as I look at him, he touches his forehead, like his temple, and he looks at his hand, and there's blood dripping from his head, and we both realize at the Jesus. same time that he has some sort of head injury, like there's blood coming from his head for some reason, and I think he realizes what's happening before I do, obviously because he is older and has life experience. He then starts shouting at everybody to get down like he's turning around to the row behind us like telling everybody get down get down then that's when i drop to the floor i don't i don't move until he tells me to move and then that's Jeez. when i realize that it's something a little bit more how many serious. weapons were and used because i, right I remember there being me. like a, one She's of the things that uh i remember so the I news her her arm, pointing out at the time like, like from what i what is, is this the, the remnants of the event in my memory is just that uh, they did emphasize how much weaponry was used and how many weapons and were used because i think there's like different you know, types Rebecca of weapons that were used ground, too but at the same time she wasn't moving and so there on the bottom of that seat with all the screens the lights the movie going the smoke in the theater um it was like a war zone <laughs> what and in the hell? corner out of the crack of the seat um once i got enough courage to just lift my head up just a little bit um because you could hear the bullets hitting the front of the seat you could hear the bullets hitting people you could hear the nice. screams Kung and Panda. just you know, it was just so surreal. It was like a horror movie with a Viet, you know, a Vietnam, you know, Bush battle, you know, you know, and real wild movies playing, and you're right in the middle of it. You know, I really never described it that way, but that's pretty much what it felt like. Um, and then the sound, you know, the the boom, boom, boom. Yeah, I well, couldn't I imagine how a gun sounds uh, in a, a in a, a space man. like so a theater. That one is, uh, because real. they have so soundproofing and stuff wife, to a certain degree in most theaters. The row is too small for us. You know, it's not good for for sitting. I said, mm -hmm. not sitting. You need to lay down. My son is really lay down, and then my wife too. And then uh, suddenly, I feel my eyes is uh, cut something, so I cannot see clear at that time. In an exclusive interview Aww. with Iwu, the retired commander from the Aurora Yo. Police Department and one of the first Yo. responders that night, Michael Daly. That's got to be a shit show for the cops as well. <laughs> I'm not like super pro cop, but man, night, it's got to be a shit show to get called to that scene team. because what the fuck? I was also on duty like again, the 911, the, 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 from what we've heard of the 911 calls so far, the, the actual 911 operators have been like awesome at getting information, but I don't know 
I think those were when the everything first started happening, and I don't know how quickly they were able to get that information to the cops. It was targeting crime in some of our older areas, our older neighborhoods. When the initial calls came out, we were working in a different district of the city, and uh, I think to a man, the, the whole uh, summer task force thought, oh, it's a shooting at the mall. District 2 can handle it. It sounds routine. We'll just kind of monitor. As the radio transmission started to pick up, it became apparent that there was an active shooting going on in the theater. They're still shooting? We've heard a couple more shots yet. Okay. Right away, it becomes surreal because police officers train for this, but when it comes to your town, it's like, holy cow. I responded to the scene. <laughs> Uh, this again, happens. I can tell you, I, I jumped on Interstate 225 <laughs> with man. my uh, police car. I get it. It has to be trippy. As as that car would go maybe 110 miles an hour. It's an old horse. And I talk about this even today. I don't remember passing other cars on the highway. I mean, you you instantaneously tunnel vision, become brother, focused tunnel on vision. You know, where you're going and, and you're starting to think about what you, know, what you might have to <laughs> do and stuff like that. So to this very day, in my mind, I, I know I was on the highway. I know I was driving very fast, but I don't even know if there were other cars out there with me. The current chief of the Aurora Police Department, Jad Lanigan, shares a similar experience <laughs> from the night of the shooting in his exclusive interview. This I worked a swing shift at the time. It was 3 in the afternoon to 3 in the morning shift. I was the swing shift uh, probationary watch commander at the time. When it happened, of course, it was at midnight. 12 30 in the morning when it happened it was just like the, any other started night. It was at 12. Beautiful outside. the actual movie we got started at 12. went to work that day and, and right around that is when the shooting actually happened on. and that was the last thing he said to me and i remember feeling like that final Aww. like push of pressure before i didn't feel his hands anymore and i remember like hearing like really deep heavy breathing but it was like rattly and i didn't I didn't put Aww. two and two together that that was John's breathing, and it was Jeez. it was three breaths. I distinctly remember it was three like really rattled breaths, and then I didn't hear it anymore. And um, there was a lot of stimulus going on. There was like, well, because again, you have the movie. It was I mean, a movie was playing. So you have people much, freaking out, and then like, you also have the actual just, shooter like, blood rushing down on me, like heavy mm. waves, like so heavy it would rush on my face and then I was blinking it down my eyeballs. It felt like sometimes like gravel was being thrown at me. Like every once in a while I would like hear this, like, feel this like small rocks like hitting me. And you know, I was, had my hands over my head. When the officers arrive at the theater, the sight is nothing short of a horror movie. Arapaho 911, is this reference to shooting in Aurora? Yes, ma'am, and I got shot. I got hit. You were hit. Jesus. Yes, okay, hold on a second. Do not hang up. Sir, do not hang up. I need to bring Aurora on the phone, okay? Do not hang up. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, hold on a second. Do not hang up. I need to bring Aurora on the phone, okay? Do not hang up. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh, my gosh. I got hit. I'm bleeding. I'm watching. Jesus Christ. Okay, hold on just a second. Get to the scene. I park on the side street, run up this small grassy berm and I first encounter an officer that has an individual he's shot on the ground he's bleeding bad the officer's asking for help so I start helping I get that they're trying to this. again show there's like a trail of blood like people were actively like getting out of there trying to get out of there while they were obviously bleeding but like what the hell? subject I send another officer back from my patrol car he actually drives it up over the grassy berm and we load this uh I call him a kid. He was probably about 20 years oh, old. Oh, no. Street Motive dying. In the of my car. No. I tell the officer. Well, that's not good. We have, uh, I'm kind of surprised I was able to stream for three hours earlier today because Spectrum's doing maintenance and other things. Is stream better or is it worse? Because uh, it's not showing any drop frames or anything from my side, but that doesn't always mean anything. God bless Spectrum and Twitch. Is it better or is it still dying? Oh, God. Okay. Get in with him. Hang on. Tell me if it uh, dies. If the off. stream dies, we're probably just going to cut it there. So I'm not even going to lie. The ambulance. We drop that patient off. And then he and I go immediately to the front of the theater. There's already people streaming out. It's very chaotic to start. And, and at this point, I still, like, I can't process what's going on. Like, I know mm -hmm. that it's 
an active shooter, but that wasn't something that was as common back then as it is nowadays. It wasn't something that was my first That fucking statement makes me it. sad. That fucking comment makes me so sad. <laughs> but it's literally what I introed almost this entire thing on. It wasn't as much of a common experience as it is now. Like, that's just grim as fuck. Ever feel real. I just remember there were points in time where after we were on the floor, each of us were kind of popping up over the seats to see what we could see, what we could figure out, and if we could figure out an exit strategy. And while all of that is happening, I can hear Veronica making Aww. these sounds that I've never heard a human make. They're the most comparable I could compare it to is like moans of pain. Like she Aww, she wasn't saying no. words and she was just it's very hard to describe because I've never heard a, a human being make it. I Jesus knew immediately Christ. by these sounds that something was wrong. And then I start to look at her and I see that there's blood like on her clothes and on her stomach. And so then I start shouting to her mom and my cousin, like, I think she's hurt. I think she's hurt. And I'm trying to talk to her Aww. and she's responding, but not with words. Like I, I know she hears me, but all she can do is, is moan and reply. And I ask my friend to give me her phone because I don't know where any of my stuff is. My bag is somewhere in the mix and that's where my phone was. And so she hands me her phone and I proceed to call 911. When 911 answers, they tell me what my emergency is. Like, they already know what's happening. They said, like, are you out Well, the because by then and they're said, already getting help. a ton of calls. I think she's hurt. I think she's been shot. Oh, 911, are you calling her for the crime in progress Jesus. or for a life-threatening emergency? <laughs> I want the final bullet count. I need, I want to know. My brain is itching to know. And they are giving me these instructions to give her CPR. And moments before this happened, Ashley had picked up her head just to see what she could figure out. She dropped down like involuntarily She and she plopped down. She's still responsive at this time. And so I'm telling her like, Ashley, you need to move. I need to give her CPR. Push down his forehead and lift up under his chin until his head tilts back and the chin points up. I can't hear you. The so loud. Okay, Jesus. I need you to look into his mouth. Do you see anything in his mouth? Do I see anything on the ground? In his oh mouth. Oh, my God. I can't hear you. I'm okay. so sorry. Okay, ma'am, that's okay. Can you put your ear to his mouth and see if he's breathing? Oh, he's not. I, I'm the only one in the chest and he's not. And Ashley's screaming at me that she can't move. She physically cannot move. And there's not enough space for us to move her without anyone else getting shot more than they've already been. So it was impossible for me to get to Veronica's chest because mm-hmm. Ashley was laying on her. And I just kept screaming at the 911 operator, like, I can't get to her chest. I can't do it. Like, I can't reach her. Please help. I need you to start CPR on your cousin. Can you hear me? I can't. I will walk you through how to. I will walk you through how to perform CPR. They have sent their help, and they can only do so much for me over the phone. And so I just remember passing the phone back to my friend because there was nothing more that could be done. There's nobody here, ma'am. Oh, there's no gun. There's no gun. Ma'am. Can you hear me, ma'am? I mean, it was constant. It was fast. It was just. It was deafening almost, and so in the and that time span, like you know, seconds had gone by, you know, time had gone by, and you know, people were stepping on me to get over, and all of a sudden, like a voice in my head said, "He's gonna stop shooting, and when he does, you leave the theater." It's absolute mayhem with well, deafening yeah, gunshots if you can kind of be one safe, of the auditoriums. You're gonna run out of bullets at some point. To safety, and injured victims cry for help. Uh, of course, the suspect had dispersed gas inside the theater, like a uh, chemical agent that very similar to what the police use, tear gas and th- things like that. So immediately when you entered the building, you could smell it, and then it starts to affect you. As they prepare Jesus to charge Christ. into the theater, oh, hey the there. officers brace themselves Is for a boiling? potential shootout. Oh, However, oh, yeah. the cloud of tear gas was severely hampering their vision okay, and so compromising their off. ability to respond effectively. Oh, okay. Any units 
Okay, we'll do something. I got it because I thought I was hungry. I'm not. Nine, we can't get in we're letting Rescue know as well. I start talking to my cousin. No, not right this second. What I'll we're going to do. Like, I, I remember telling him we need to get out of here. His response to me was that Ashley couldn't move and I wasn't strong enough to help him carry her out. And even if we were to carry her out, he's still actively shooting. Like, we're not going to make it. I was just like, there is no way. And then almost five seconds later, true story, he stopped. I don't want to give away why the gun, why his gun stopped, but it stopped in a way that I knew it was time for me to get up and go. Um, I tried to get Rebecca up, she slumped back into the seat. I started moving towards the row and I got tripped over. At that time, I, I heard shots fired. I was tumbling down the road and made it through to the exit. And as I made it out the left side exit, um, I remember uh, seeing a person who was shot in the arm. Look how ass that fucking video call is. God exit, damn. And it was just so surreal. I mean, to make it out of the theater and to get into the lobby, I felt like I... I, I achieved something. And, uh, you survived, brother, man. You fucking survived. Uh, survive. What are you talking about? People were dying. Uh, he's laid down too. I just saying that time I remember. Forget it. My son. Like, that's a funky statement to make, brother. So, this guy, after several times using the gun, he tried to change the, the second or reload. I don't know. So I can feel that one is uh, we have time to, to get out from there. So I said to, to my family, this is the time we go. So we tried to jumping, but uh, my son, of course, he's doing the first one because he's my on the right side. So he's into another row behind. And then the shoe is off. And then he start complaining, my shoe, my shoe. No, forget it with the shoe. <laughs> Just get out. I said, go. Man so lost his Jordans. Ran from there. So <laughs> my son, after that, my wife, and then me. When we do, we really running, need arrows. They already, already introduced. Huh? You know, with, uh, <laughs> they introduced spear, us to them already. What do you, you know, mean? And then we cannot breathing well. And then the floor is so slippery. Even the carpet, but it's slippery. I'm just thinking that time if uh, we can go together from the building safe so we can go if we die die three people i said like that my wife is uh going run i don't know why they're running to that guy because this guy is not stay he's moving mm -hmm. around walking around so but finally my wife uh realized this is the bad guy use uh holding the the long stick but that one is bad. Uh. so after, <laughs> after <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. He's holding the stick, but it's long gun, though. <laughs> Aww, what the fuck? What the hell? The bad guy, he's uh, asking us to, to move uh, another way. So, kind of uh, to stay away from that guy. So, we're going to kind of the exit door. The one is close to the first time that guy is standing up. So, in the front. Towards the front, near the screen. Uh, near the screen. We cannot see anything, so we we touching the wall to follow yeah. that, and then the the green exit. We can see that, and then until Jesus until the, the exit door. I mean, I'm glad that they obviously the made it out, but like, dude, I'm 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 fucking tripping over how how what and words he's using <laughs> to describe she things. Just go. You guys just go, just leave me here. She said like that. So you know, I'm sorry if uh, back to twenty twelve. My emotional is coming back. In that door, it's not only us, though. I think it's uh, three or four people in the door, the the exit door. So we, like, try who's going first, who's going first. Because we doesn't know which one is bad guy, which one is a person watching movie. We doesn't know that. So I just grabbed my wife from the floor. Aww. I pulled her to out of the door. And then my son is uh, helping a Jesus young, young couple. Jesus Christ. With a broken she got shot twice, twice, dude. Once the smoke clears out, the police Bro. are confronted with a heart-wrenching scene at the auditorium. The harrowing damage, the wounded, and dead. But that's what I'm saying. Like, a ton of families really have, like, at least 
families with children around my age, it seems, tend to have the whole like tradition of like, oh, a new a new superhero movie came out. We're gonna watch it together. Because you know, dad likes comic books, or you know, mom and dad used to dabble in this kind of stuff, and you get to see it on the on the big screen, like. Oh, uh, by the time he was done, the movie was off. That's what gets me because it's just like, bro. And it was almost like simultaneously like any movie would have been on, bad, but the fact that it was fucking was Batman is just like, oh. This entire flood of police officers in like raid attire, like they had the the shields and they were in like these big masks and these black suits and they were just very intimidating looking and as soon as I saw them like everyone that was still left in the theater just kept shouting from different places like from down below or far up like help us we have injured help us come help us and I don't know if it was because they were following protocol or if they couldn't hear us over there but it was like they were moving in slow motion like they it's were because they're to assessing the situation uh, and at that point they also don't know who exactly is involved we like I won't debate that's why they finally reached us and I was just screaming like help us we we have a child she's injured help us help us and so they pulled me and my friend out first and I remember when I was walking down the stairs there was a body of a man kind of like laying at the bottom of the stairs and I recognized Jesus. him as the guy who was shouting the countdown God damn. and I think he died trying to escape because he was above us and when I saw him he was below our row and so I was barefoot, just walking through endless amounts of blood, trying to step over puddles that I could. And right before I went out the emergency exit, I turned around and I was watching Jameson and a police officer picking up Ashley by her hands and legs. And I, I didn't see Jesus Veronica, Christ. like I didn't know where she was. While one party continues to look for the shooter, another team of officers what the fuck, quickly zombie? switched gears to extend medical aid to no. the critically wounded in an attempt to stabilize no. the dire situation. Another victim on the north side of this theater in the parking lot. 302, I got another male shot. I need rescue right in front of the theaters by Dillard's, right off the main road. Cruiser 25, you need to break in. I've got two victims on the east side, north side of the theater. I need an ambulance here quick. We need rescue inside the auditorium. Multiple victims. Lincoln 25, I need rescue to stage in the Dillard's lot. I need as many ambulances as we can to the Dillard's lot. Christine, I got seven down in the theater night. Seven down. I've got a child Jesus. victim. I need rescue at the back door. Theater I don't remember right how many victims there were in this case. In need of immediate medical Between help injured and actual dead. Of available ambulances. I don't remember. Again, I remember it being a big deal because it was high amounts. Doing everything within their power to speed up the transfer of wounded individuals to the hospital. Do I have permission to start taking some of these victims via, via car? I got a whole bunch of people shot out here. No rescue. Yes, yeah, load them up. Beneath all of the chaos laid Jeez. another sense of urgency. Upon breaking into the auditorium, they'd noticed multiple firearms lying on the floor. It seemed unlikely for one person to carry it all and walk into the auditorium. The team suspects the presence of at least two shooters who might have escaped the scene by blending in with the frightened moviegoers. At this point, they decide to interview all the witnesses on site to get a picture of the incident. Cruiser 49, I'm already identifying parties who, who saw the entire thing as it unfolded. So cars continue to stop people and ask questions as to what they saw. Witnesses from Auditorium 8, the auditorium next to the shooting, recount a similar incident of an individual throwing a gas canister that caused coughing, irritation, and blurred vision among the audience. Some witnesses claimed to have seen the shooter and said that he was in regular clothes, while others said that he wore a costume. The team notifies That's all so officers great. to be on the lookout for any suspicious-looking moviegoers. 321, one of the shooters might be wearing a white and blue plaid shirt. Copy outstanding shooter possibly wearing a white and blue plaid shirt. In a race against time, those who aren't helping aid the wounded quickly start checking the CCTV footage from the theater. Just as the survivors and witnesses had informed them, the police noticed many moviegoers in costumes. Things seem to be moving smoothly until people start hearing the gunshots. 
As they diligently scrutinize the surveillance footage and comb through the mall, one officer notifies all parties with an update they've all been waiting for. 6 a.m., I need a marked car behind the theater, sable side, the suspect in a gas mask. Turn 9, okay, and we need cars south. Yeah, that's saucy. Suspect in a gas mask. That's saucy. Cars with that white car in the rear of the lot, is that a suspect? Yes, we've got rifles, gas masks. Just a little right suspect. <laughs> that, oh, that's that fucked up. That is fucked up. While combing through the mall, one of the officers stepped out from Auditorium 9's exit and noticed a trail of blood. He then caught sight of someone wearing what appeared to be police armor and a mask. Hmm. However, unlike everyone else who was gripped by panic and horror, this individual remained remarkably <laughs> composed. <laughs> little sussy. As soon as the officer sussy. approached, what the, fuck? the individual instinctively raised his hands oh in the my air, God. seemingly cooperative. However, it was when the officer glanced at the man's car. Whoa! He got that skeleton. I like the skeleton. Car in the secluded parking lot. The chills ran down his spine. <laughs> Look at how fucking poo poo doo doo! Every single thing! Everything! Every single fucking crime photo of a suspect's house or... Why is it always disgusting? Wet wipes! Bro, wet wipes! Almost immediately, God the damn. individual admits to being the sole shooter. However, he then makes an even more shocking admission. He confesses to having arranged an explosive booby trap at his apartment. Oh yeah, which was I situated remember this five too. Minutes away from the I theater. remember this because that also this hit the news pretty fast. This revelation puts the lives of all apartment residents and the entire neighborhood at risk. If I remember correctly, they were not only scared of that, but they were scared that he had uh, pl uh, bombs, makeshift bombs planted at other places too because of how fucking unhinged this entire situation was. Because it's not that fucking out of the ordinary to think if he's able to fucking booby trap his fucking apartment, pull off this fucking stunt, that he could have other areas booby trapped and ready to go. In a whirlwind of urgency and concern, officers immediately take the man, 24-year-old James... God damn. I don't need words. Custody. <laughs> I, Other officers I don't need words, man. Apartment. There, true to what he had declared, they uncover a harrowing booby trap arrangement that bears an eerie resemblance to a ticking time bomb set to unleash devastation upon anyone within its vicinity. The police swiftly evacuate the residents of James's apartment building and of the five other buildings in the surrounding area. Uh, I didn't realize it was so many buildings. The perilous situation. They robot, place a bomb robot, robot inside the apartment to analyze the threat efficiently. <laughs> Given the chaos in the vicinity and the number of people affected, the news of the incident starts trending on Twitter, and media houses swarm the theater. Oh yeah. Word of the attack spread rapidly throughout the country, prompting worried family members to rush to the scene in search of their loved ones. To assist them, the police establish a camp at a nearby high school where family yep. members can receive information about their relatives. At the police station, what the James fuck? remained... Man is an actual clown emoji. <laughs> he's remarkably composed and unfazed by the gravity of his crimes and the lives he's taken. Why, why is he just in... Why is he just in underwear or shorts? Why is this a thing? I don't understand. <laughs> Why did they do that? <laughs> I mean, I guess considering what he did, it's kind of fair, but like, huh? Huh? Yeah, I'm gonna need you to not play with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna need you to not play with that. <laughs> what? Was he trying no, to mess around weird, with the socket? On your hands, but uh, just bear with me. Just leave him on there. We'll get him off if we scoop the can, okay? Just trust me. Oh my God! Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Just because of those things? Or what what things? things? With this camera. Huh? With this we just want to make sure that your hands are protected. You're protected? Yeah. Duct tape and paper bags? <laughs> Duct tape and paper bags because he wouldn't stop touching things? <laughs> I'm sorry, that is... <laughs> what? <laughs> Where in the handbook does it teach you to do that? Where? Point it out to me. I want to read that paragraph. <laughs> I want to imagine how that went down to. Okay, he won't stop touching shit. He's he's like t he's poking shit. He's touching shit. All right, get out the duct tape. Get out the paper bags. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know what this is for? 
Oh, is it a used fucking but bag? Right He's gonna put that in a little different sack. In the interrogation, what the his fuck? answers continue to follow the same bizarre I've pattern. never seen any, like, any of the interview footage with him at all. That is an interesting way to just intro the whole thing. And we have water coming. Yeah. Other than that, you need anything? Oxygen. I'm gonna read this to you. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Hey, brother, okay. you have oxygen. The Shineston um, Victim Services Unit. Children something. Uh huh. What What about that? There wasn't any children. Hurt. Bullshit. Uh, I don't know. We'll get to that. I, I I don't I don't know. Okay. For someone who showed no remorse for his actions, James seems to want the officers to know he claims to be concerned about Bullshit. any children. <laughs> His strange behavior Bullshit. and demeanor raise numerous questions about what had led him to commit such a heinous attack. To unravel the mystery, investigators delve Oy. deep into his life, conducting a comprehensive That's background a investigation picture. covering the months leading up to the incident. What they uncover we don't is need not that at all what That's they uncomfy. expected. That is uncomfy and uncalled for. Society. What is Michael Well, Michael Arden uh, nerd shit, nerd that? shit, nerd shit. It turned shit. out that James Holmes was a PhD student nerd studying shit. neuroscience at the University of Hell Colorado. Yeah. He called himself an aspiring scientist, was an honor student, and had applied for jobs working One, two, as a three, lab four, technician. Five, what, six James books on that bookshelf. Started the PhD That's program. so sad. Look at how empty that bookshelf is. That's not how you do that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Um, nine books between three shelves. It, That's he sad. He would have been a doctor of neuroscience and able to work as a professor or in a lab. His mentor, Professor Sukumar, speaks highly of his talent, but shares a few red flags about his behavior. <laughs> oh, it's his stock photo. Interacted with people. Why? Well, well I guess because 2012. Manners, but, like, these pictures are so such as. I mean, I can tell you this. I mean, for example, in the seminar, he would have... Uh, you know, off the cuff remarks, or you know, you would have this funny creatures kind of thing. And, and off the cuff, as 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 trying to be funny, kind of okay. thing, which, which a comedian. people found was not very appropriate. He's so trying to be a comedian. I used to train when he had to give seminars, he would rehearse it with me, and I used to go through all that, you know, trying to mm -hmm. get him to stop doing that. And and in the end, he would fully improve. But. So there were concerns socially, but... Uh, yeah, I love the statement. Finale. There were concerns socially while you have this image on screen. You don't say. You don't say there were concerns socially. Why did he pick that hair color and that haircut? I'm confused. Why did he do that? There were red flags in terms of whether you'd be successful and with his kind of personality, kind of issues, but never any concerns that he's going to... End up shooting okay. Furthermore, this professor oh my reveals God. that despite Why? his high IQ of 123, Why? a knack for science, James he got that Rick and Morty exam. IQ. On June 7th, there was this preliminary exam that James didn't do well. And I think about June 8th or 9th. <laughs> Just this picture. I, society. I talked to James and told him that we were planning to give him a remedial exam two to three weeks i think the day. cut was not and up to him and the hair because he edgy I also told him just dyeing your hair a random color does not make it edgy what the, the fuck i don't understand that and at that point he told me that he had been thinking about it and he had decided to leave the program so that was the last contact i had with james holmes i think it must have been that is some fucking clown shit is what that is let me, let me go to that contact when you told james about that was there any other conversation about why he wanted to quit the program was it specific no. to this oral exam or it was specific to the oral exam while the investigating team makes notes on james's behavior on campus and course of decision life. to leave the program so they found his the fucking FBI manages to get journal? detailed information from james I know that isn't piss, but it looks kind of like it could be piss. I know it's probably gasoline or some James shit. About the booby trap he had set up in his apartment. Not every color is edgy color, the hell? That is clown color. If I go walk into the gym, I'm going to be 
games anyone can even think of, you know, uh, I would be concerned about. God damn. He yeah. had colored contacts? Those look like the costume ones. What the hell? Calm down, just not it. Calm down. How much money did this dude spend on supplies for this entire situation? On the other hand, the for the bomb making? The oh yeah, that's those that contacts. James had been seeing a psychiatrist on campus. Nice. Furthermore, it comes to light that there had been significant tension and issues between James and the How much money did he spend on ammo, weapons, and the makeshift, makeshift the stuff for the bombs? To find out more about the conflict, the you investigators meet with the lead campus officer on the case. In this never-before-seen interview, the officer's chilling revelations expose the dark and ominous reality of James's thoughts. I guess what I'm saying is, what brought Holmes to your attention that you created I this? Create a file. Right. When I talked to you. Again, this was just a telephone call. Was you, a telephone call. Was this at your office or your? My office called me, and she said that she had been seeing a student who had failed an exam. And he had made comments to her, I want to kill as many people as possible. What the fuck? That's such a jump! That's such a jump, man! What the hell? We're very concerned. Who just, like, I, again, I want to hear that actually play out. Well, maybe I don't, because that means something bad might happen. Like, I kind of want to be a fly on the wall for when that happens. Because, like, how do you just casually say, oh, yeah, I want to murder multiple people? I want to kill as many people as possible right now. You guys get that absolutely normal feeling of just wanting to kill everybody and everything? Like, uh, what? <laughs> you, huh? About this individual. So I asked her to give me as much information as she could on him. This so is the second conversation now that you've had with her. Okay, but, and so then, whatever date, which we probably think now is the 11th, probably at 1322. Correct. Okay. So I told her that there's really nothing on him. We can find nothing on him. And she explained that he had come in voluntarily a couple months ago and that she thought he was psychotic or could be schizophrenic, that he was in the age group for a first break for schizophrenia. She said that he had expressed to her constant homicidal thoughts. I asked if he had a plan. Again, what she the said fuck was he saying? Specific targets, but he liked thinking about it. She said that she knew from seeing him that at least for a couple of years he had been teased. And that he was in the neuroscience science program for a year. Um, that she felt that he was odd and awkward throughout the year. And that he seemed unconcerned about... You can be odd and awkward and not murder people. ...about his performance. He left in a huff, and that was in a meeting. That meeting, I have no idea when it took place. She said that he had refused antipsychotic drugs when she had offered them to him. Again, she didn't say when. So I have no information about that. Um, so did he just snap because mental illness and shit? Emoticons of him punching her in the face and getting her black eye. She said at one time he said that is always scared of me and she has a bag behind the chair. I don't know who that was addressed to when he said that. The psychiatrist was so alarmed by the violent thoughts James had shared that she informed the authorities about his dangerous inclinations and his high potential to act on them. Oof. This doesn't break HIPAA, the federal law that restricts the sharing of sensitive patient information with third parties. Because if a patient is at risk of hurting themselves yeah, no, or others, that's whole thing. it's not yeah. only negligence if it's not reported, but it's legally required to be reported. So I am surprised there aren't more cases where things aren't reported yeah, before stuff happens. If he had said, you know, how he was going to kill people, and she said he hasn't told anyone how he would kill and that he became interested in neuroscience to overcome biology. She didn't define overcome biology, so I don't know exactly what that meant. That is a funky statement, what? So she what? told me at that time that she was going to call his mom. When she called me back, she said she had talked to his mother and that that was pretty much his normal baseline behavior. I asked her a few more questions. What I said, the fuck? Does, does he have a support system here? said, no, he has no family here. He's from San Diego. That he tends to be a loner and doesn't really have friends. He did tell her, I have $10,000 saved up and that will last a little while. My parents would help me. This was in response to him finding out he had failed his preliminary. Uh, he told her, I didn't like the program anyway. I'm going to drop out. 
Did she tell you anything else? She did. I, I asked her what she was doing from there, and she said she wasn't going to put him on a hold because he was borderline. However, despite the psychiatrist's ongoing concerns, the university's police department found no incriminating evidence against James or any cause to see his statements as intent to harm. Since he decided to drop out of the program and leave the university, the that's matter a thing. eventually... Wait, hold up. That's a thing? What the hell? That's weird. Large, darkly shaded hands. Indicator of aggressive tendencies. What if he just likes shading? <laughs> what? Faded away. The officer also reveals that she'd spoken with one of James's friends who shared some troubling text messages from James with her. So we went into a private room. Um, she identified herself as and said that she didn't know if it had anything to do with anything. So he did have friends, you just didn't have a ton of them. Message on her phone. I feel like that sometimes. Messaging him. As recently, Hose ain't um, loyal, dog! That's what she told me. And she showed me the text messages. And I advised her to keep those text messages, to forward them to her email, not to delete them, but not to send them to me. As she showed me to them, I, would, I picked out some key things. And she was basically, she told me she was asking him, had contacted him to see how he was doing because she hadn't heard from him for a while. They were not intimate. They were not boyfriend-girlfriend. She had tried to befriend him. They had gone on a hike together at one time. And she was just trying to see, you know, how he was because she hadn't heard from him. They were homies! And looking at those yes, text messages, facts. one of the things I noticed was that he said, I have dysphoric mania. Oh, but some men are hoes. Stay away from me on bad news. Dysphoric mania you could be any is gender in a hoe. This is a fact. Disorder. The officer's reports detailing James's deteriorating mental health and disturbing preoccupation with violence prompt the investigators to examine his web search history. This information oh, reveals no. a troubling array of maps to the Aurora Theater and delving into explanations of numerous mental health conditions and philosophical theories, each one seemingly more troubling than the what last. What the fuck? Further tracking of his credit cards showed that between May and July of 2012, James purchased firearms from a firearms dealer and picked up deliveries of ammunition from the FedEx Center. It appeared that James had meticulously orchestrated every aspect of the shooting and had conducted extensive research on the Century 16 Theater. After the FBI speaks with James about the explosives, can we get this man an actual shirt? I don't want to see his fucking man titty out. The booby trap via controlled blasts, ultimately saving several other lives that were threatened by his vicious plan. After eliminating the booby trap, police conduct a thorough search of his apartment and find a Batman mask and tickets to the show, among other pieces of evidence. <laughs> While James's nice. plans to shoot people at the theater find form in the evidence the investigators have gathered so far, his decision to set up an explosive booby trap at his apartment leaves everyone puzzled. Was it a sign that he intended to take his own life following the shooting? Or could it be part of an elaborate scheme they're yet to discover? I love that there's just shitted on the ground, too. He didn't even clean up before he fucking set up his fucking bombs. In a series of interviews, a psychologist, Dr. William Reed, spent hours talking to James, discussing his thoughts and giving us a rare and chilling glimpse into the mind of a mass murderer. The following footage has been analyzed by a qualified team including a licensed professional counselor and a licensed clinical psychologist. During these interviews, he also Ready. reveals his true, twisted plan for the booby trap in his apartment. Did you ever test that stuff? No, I didn't get to test any of the incendiary devices. I was figuring they wouldn't work, and it was just made to look bomb-like. Like, that's really scary. But we have to divert attention to over here. There was, like, a small possibility that it would work. And so, so tell me, enough that they would be interested in stopping it. And what was your thought about a purpose, a reason that you would want them to be interested or something you would want them to do? To get them away from the theater, so kind of divert their forces over to the apartment. How were you planning to accomplish that? Through a noise complaint from the neighbors to bring them there. Okay. How was that set up? Uh, that was just set up to my computer where loud music would play after 15 minutes of silence. God so damn. It was, a, it was just silent. So, I, 
Did he want it, both things to happen at the same time, or did he want that to happen first, so that there would be police over there? I'm confused. I get the whole wanting to divert police-like forces, but everyone was already at the theater, it feels, because everything had kind of popped off at the theater, like, quite literally. It's on the so how the fuck are you... And how did that work out in terms of attracting somebody to the sound? I think they made the complaint, but there wasn't a big response by the police, if there even was a response by the police. Yeah, because so they were all at the theater. would complain in the plant to the police, and the police would go to the apartment, bang on the door, open the door. Yeah, I left the door unlocked. As you were thinking about that, did you consider the possibility that a person might have come to the door, that is a non-police person, might have come to the door... Yeah, that's why when I sent a tripwire, I didn't have it attached to the door. I had it kind of inside. So they'd be able to see inside, but not go, to, to like, disable anything because there's an obstacle in the way. So if the person who opens the door could see what was there... Then they definitely call the police. They would call the cops. It occurs to me that the cops also would not, once they saw it, they wouldn't rush in either. James's affect is notably flat here. He's likely medicated, so it's hard to know if this is diagnostic related or medication yeah, related. Yeah, I feel like it's hard to actually diagnose anything because, because yeah. To be flattened. At this Regardless, point, when he's in the system, you know he's going to be heavily medicated if like half of what was shown on screen was true about his mental health. It's quite eerie and showcases his lack of emotion. Although the bombs in James's apartment were put there to distract police and allow him more time to freely murder a large number of victims in the theater... He still informed police of the presence of the bombs after he was apprehended. James didn't have to make this confession, so it's possible that after the horrific massacre at the theater, like he I'm might assuming have felt he, some level of regret. I'm assuming he just picked Regardless the theater of because James's of plan and the intentions. Offer, like, all of this shows it's his unfortunately a good place to kill a lot of people or abilities. attack a lot of people. We know that he's intelligent. But even individuals with high intelligence tend to be cognitively impaired when they're in the midst of a psychotic episode or a manic episode. It's difficult for them to focus, sustain attention, and follow through on even simple daily tasks, much less something as complex as planning and executing a murderous rampage of this magnitude. James might have had periods of psychosis and maybe mania too, but it's likely that when he committed the mass shooting, his thinking and other cognitive processes were intact. Still, even with these admissions, a crucial question lingered. Why? In a final shocker, investigators Facts. are notified by the authorities at Colorado University. I'm willing to bet it literally is just the most damaged. Like, he probably sat down and thought about it, or he, he thought about it in passing, and he was like, this would be a good time. About a notebook lying in the... I don't know what the actual answer is, because I don't... James had mailed this notebook to his psychiatrist on July 19th, detailing his thoughts and plans during the weeks leading up to the crime. But the notebook was never delivered to her. Though this would have given her a heads up, James revealed that he knew she'd only received the book after he'd done the damage. Jeez. Can you tell me why you created the notebook? To educate the psychiatrist so something like this wouldn't happen <coughs> again. Was there any other purpose to creating the notebook besides educating the psychiatrist? Well, if I died, it would have kind of told my story. This statement Did it have an anything other than... I'm confused. An... I'm confused. Did it have anything other than the plans... Like diagrams and stuff. Did it have like an actual reason or just this is going to happen? Because that's not telling a story. That's just this showing how you did it. You know what I mean? Among individuals with severe antisocial personality disorder, they really believe that they are that important. In the book, James described his plans, his mental struggles, feelings, oh, okay. and so his idea of seeing did. humans based on their worth in the context of their life. He added the most worth to children and believed they deserved a chance to live. But you killed children. This that makes sense. This detail explained his concern for child victims during sense. the shooting. What did you put together? Uh, that a child was killed the next day, I think. How did you react at that time when you put that together? That they tried to minimize child fatality by choosing midnight and PG-13. Once you learned that a child was killed, that you had killed a child? Uh, yeah, it was remorseful. That I was sad that a child had died. Did you think much about it? Um, 
Yeah. Do you still think what you're doing? I don't know how it could have been avoided, though, other than changing the plan to something else. If you had known that a child was going to be killed, would you have changed the plan, do you think? No, I think I would have still carried it out. Because, he's, he, have, because he still knows that it's minimum damage to what he actually wants. Like, it's it's still minimal. I feel like he's he's looking at it like it, it, it was the best case situation. He did everything he could to avoid that. Children shouldn't have been there. I feel like that's the attitude there. Knowing that lots of children were going to be hurt, dozens of children were going to be hurt. Then I'd have to change the plan to make it impersonal and not with children. And you're aware that dozens of children were hurt? I'm not aware of that. I didn't know dozens of children were his hesitation and his cop-out claiming he doesn't know how it could have been avoided indicates that James likely doesn't care about having killed a child. His supposed concern about children seems like it's just another aspect of his narcissism. He seems to want to act like he's a decent person because he's willing to spare children from his evil plan. Another indication of his grandiosity is how he has placed himself in a position of deciding who should live and who should die a god complex. He's still trying to justify that he's innocent and has convinced himself that he did everything he could to prevent the child's death. Perhaps he's even blaming the parents of the child for allowing them to be at a late night movie, as if they shouldn't have been there. It seems they were That's just collateral ridiculous. damage in James's mind. <laughs> Me driving down my road at 5 a.m. at dawn, what the fuck? What the hell? He didn't keep no. all of these disturbing details to himself, Don't however. do that, huh? It's not safe. He first shared these thoughts with his girlfriend at the time via a Gmail. He chat. had a fucking girlfriend! What the hell? Let's see. Hey, you rickrolling the world. Did you click it? Nope. It says below the link what it is. Still a good song. Hey, you should incorporate his world-famous pants-wearing style. I am debating whether to sleep Skyrim or read Skyrim. Slay those damn dragons. I would and all, but it probably won't be very useful for the future. How much is reading or sleeping going to help? More than video games, I suppose. If it's something fun that you like to do, go ahead and do it. The future for once. Okay. Fuck the future for once. Do what you feel like doing. It's a Sunday afternoon. What? Get on with your life. Nice. Killing people? What the hell? One message read. What I feel like doing is evil, so can't do that. Video games On being asked escapism. what was the evil he wanted to do, James said, kill people, of course. When his girlfriend had joked about fuck? being locked Killing up after the act, people is too much James effort, you'll end up locked saying, up. Most people are not worth what might people. happen to you because of the act. In his diary, what he the wrote hell? about contemplating what shooting the people fuck? for a long time, but claimed he hadn't acted upon his thoughts until he believed his life was truly over. He stopped caring about the consequences okay. after his girlfriend broke up with him in February. Oh, this guy hit like 59 tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm at work, I don't care. February 2012. At that time, were you still seeing or do you think you'd broken up by that time? Uh, the depression was after. At the deepest of the depressions, did you think about it? Uh, no. Any other time in the depressions, did you think about it? No. I'm not hurting or killing other people. Uh, yeah, I kind of transferred it to kind of homicidal because of like Jesus the Christ. Way. So I kind of transferred my thoughts into homicidal. Talk to me about the necessity what of the carrying fuck, out the shootings man. themselves after the preparation had done its job. Well, the shootings were supposed to increase my self worth, so that would get me out of the depression in the end. He the fucking... shootings were supposed to increase my self worth. What the Can fuck? Can you tell me a little bit about that? I think it was in a text message I sent him about human capital. How you can kind of place a value on a life. And if you take lives away, that kind of adds to your own value. What the fuck? This is another what? disturbing indication huh? of James's God complex. Huh? Only here, James is more specifically alluding to it. That's fucking terrifying. His to decide Hold up. who lives and dies and to have Hold people up. at his mercy in such a horrific way gives him some sort of sick satisfaction. What the a fuck? A high that he can ride for a short time that's to derive some sort weird. of relief from his misery. Oh my god, that's weird. In addition, this is a completely chilling thought process of a genuine psychopath. This idea of adding value to your own life by taking others' lives. 
That's He's wild, man. He's enjoying this back and forth with the psychologist, as it's all about James here, him in the inner workings of his mind. He's so full of himself that all of this digging into the what's and why's of the mass murder is allowing James to get more and more of that dopamine high by reliving it all. Is that an accurate rendition of the way you were feeling at that time? Or yeah. is, is there anything more to that that you can explain to me? Oh, I don't think there's anything else to it. That's a pretty concisely encapsulated theory, if you will. Okay. There's got to be more to it than that. Well, why is there got to be more? In what way did you think of taking other people's lives as enhancing yours? What, tell me about the logic of that. Just that anything they would have done or pursued gets canceled out and given to me. Starting today, looking back, does that what still make fuck? sense to you? Yeah. Okay. What so the fuck? The premise that okay, that's what, what the hell? Years ago, you would still agree with that. Uh, agree with that premise today. What yeah. the fuck? Okay. Only a malignant psychopath would believe this. The psychologist is correct in the sense that it's not totally clear how ending a life adds to James's life in any way. But James seeing himself as gaining something by ending lives. What the reality the is that James is not being given anything tangible by the victims, of course. The only thing James gets is a fleeting feeling of power and control. His thirst for these things is so insatiable that he needs to go to this extreme level to feel them. Again, I want a fucking count of how many bullets. With severe how many bullets were used? To extreme the acts fuck? of brutal violence because their threshold for feeling anything is so high. They often want to feel something, and they know the only way to do it is by going to such extremes. Can you say any more about that? Just that the ultimate violence is death. You resort to killing when you can't solve a problem any other way. Sounds like that applies to politics and wars. And right, yeah. Does it apply to you? Uh, yeah. Tell me how it applies to you. That's just weird. Like, I just, I, I know I'm not going to understand the thought process, and it's good that I don't understand the thought process, but, like, what the fuck? And I think we talked about that being more valuable didn't mean you would live longer. No. Or that you would have more lives. Tell me again in what way you're more valuable. Well, it's kind of like the value of a dollar. A dollar isn't worth anything, but you attribute value to it. So if you attribute value to killing people, then it's, you become more valuable when you kill them. And who does the attributing of the value? Uh, the killer. James reveals even more of his disturbing thoughts leading up to the crime during his discussions with Dr. Reed. Were there people over the last few months or so leading up to July 20th of 2012, people that you told you were angry? Oh, no, I never told anybody I was angry. Uh, a couple of people had ideas. Your you fucking told, girlfriend. Or at least got the impression that in some ways you had a hatred of mankind or were angry at oh. mankind. I uh, wrote hatred of mankind in the notebook. Okay. To you, does that translate to very angry or is that different? To me, the hatred is kind of like a hating broccoli or something, not a fiery, angry, passionate hate. It's kind of an aversive hate. Okay. Tell me about the hating broccoli kind of hate of mankind. Well, I just don't want to eat broccoli, so I kind of avoid it, be averse to it, instead of being angry at broccoli and chopping it up or something. Can you estimate what the earliest point was at which you began to think about these killings? Uh, when I bought the shotgun, I think. The shotgun. Oh, was the Harry, second that gun that you purchased of him, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What? Do you remember roughly when the earliest point was that you ever thought about I can't believe the fact anybody? that they don't teach cursive uh, in schools anymore. Teens, 17. I like, I like, I like writing in cursive, and I used uh, to love practicing in cursive. And they were destructive thoughts towards others. It was like, I don't think my ha handwriting is great, and then I write a note down at work, and one of my coworkers is like, your handwriting's so nice, and I'm like, it really fucking isn't. You mean a voice voice that you could hear inside or outside your head or something else? I like writing swear words in cursive. It's funny. James's continued flat affect and limited show of emotion in not only his <laughs> what face, the hell? but Same. his tone of not voice Same. are often indications of severe mental illness, such as psychosis. Flat affect can be associated with dysfunction in the amygdala, 
which is the part of the brain responsible for assigning emotional significance it's out for maybe a week and a what the hell see because i'm homeschooled also be that was part of my curriculum of i was taught how to like i had like actual writing practice for not just regular biological like, imbalances average handwriting and practice but also for sure and we would have two separate which affect his brain chemistry we would have two separate uh, sheets that we would have to do and i personally love them we don't see anger because you James basically so compares his feelings I used to toward love reading and writing as being and similar to how well, he I still feels love about the science vegetable. and reading and writing. It seems like James not only has significant difficulty processing emotions, I just didn't like math. but his empathy is so absent that he doesn't feel anything for other human beings. That's why anger isn't even on his radar. I don't he like how his handwriting bounces between cursive and not cursive. That's really weird to me. Fair enough. People don't mean enough to him for him to even get to the point of bothering to feel anger. People are just a nuisance to him. So his thoughts are of just exterminating them, almost like they were inanimate objects. Maybe at some point long ago, James did feel emotion for other people. Perhaps his emotions were so intense that he unconsciously shut them off. This theory may be true if James suffered some sort of childhood trauma since people with severe mental illness often have trauma histories. What about the intrusive thought? Which intrusive thought? Well, ultimately, the gun. What were the intrusive thoughts about the gun? That I should shoot as many people as possible. How do you feel as you tell me that? Your voice dropped just a little bit. Uh, not good. Make you nervous to talk about it? Or uh, what's, yeah. the fe what's the feeling? Makes me nervous. I appreciate you talking about it. Okay. And I know it's inside. I know the thoughts have been there. They're not a secret between you and I. Dr. Reed appears to be answering some of the questions for James. But this may be because this is a follow-up interview. It seems that James has previously provided some of the information. And the doctor may now be trying to differentiate his diagnosis by seeking clarification on some of his answers to decide Fair. what exactly is going on. I think it's got to be it's about... got to be harder when someone's actually like highly medicated, right? Because there's a difference between someone is suffering from, or I'd like to think there's a difference between, right? If you're looking at it from a logical standpoint and what drugs do to your brain, I feel like there's a there's a logical difference between like, oh, this person suffers from like depression or ADHD or something and they're taking like baseline medication for it and this person suffers from a slew of severe mental like illness and they're given a concoction of drugs I feel like that's going to affect your answers as well to a certain degree <laughs> nice I just I feel like that's going to I don't know I, I it's one of those things where it's kind of hard to be like uh, block ordering the tear gas are you angry or what what's the thought inside you at that time and that I have a mission to complete. That doesn't sound angry, but maybe it is. Is, is angry in there anyway? No, there's no anger. Just said it was something I had to do. Did the word mission come out of you or come from somewhere else? Not from me. Did the having to do it come from inside you or from somewhere else? Inside me. What do you make of that? What What's the something you had to the do? The vibe it gives me uh, from everything like we've seen. To do it. Is that... Around that it was time, an escalation in mental illness, and it just kind of, of what you would look he was like very smart, and, it, he, and he just kind of yeah. snapped. And that's well, not an excuse. I'm not giving, I'm not saying that that is an excuse. He did a horrible, horrible thing, but I'm saying that's what I'm seeing. That there was no, like, particular trigger, like, although I guess you could say that the start of the downfall was him breaking up with his girlfriend. But, like, uh, from everything that I we've heard that. about his school life and everything his else, his behavior he got worse. Nine as his target, given its size, and because it had an exit that led to a sparsely used parking lot. Did you have a particular crowd in mind, a particular setting in mind at that time? No, not at that time. So, going back now over two years, what do you think the crowd looked like? Where was it? What were they doing? What was going on? It was just a crowd. There wasn't any specific setting to it. Further interrogations with James helped the investigators understand the timeline of events from his perspective. On the night of the event, he dressed in regular clothes and reached the Century 16 Theater for a packed midnight show of the movie The Dark Knight Rises. He occupied a seat in the front row for Auditorium 9 and had walked out of the exit door half an hour into the movie. 
pretending to be on a oh, call. Oh, it was after the movie started. It used a tablecloth like holder started. to prop the door open. I didn't know that. I thought it was just when it started. The parking lot. At what point did you call the behavioral health hotline and the hotline was like that? Like halfway through gearing up from the car. What? Yeah, I called them, but I couldn't, I couldn't hear anybody on the other line. What led you to make that call? This one last uh, chance to see if I should turn back or not. How big was the part of you that was hoping for that last chance? It was overruled by complete denial. But how big was it to be overruled? Not very big. Enough to make you dial off the phone? Yeah. What was your thought when the phone call ended? Uh, I'm really going to need this. Following Jesus. this call, he put on a ballistic 3A jacket and an arm protector on one arm, a belt with ammunition, and a tactical vest. He also put on a gas mask and a helmet in addition to arming himself with multiple firearms. In some of the pictures the investigators eventually found on his iPhone, James's eyes looked bigger and solid black. Context. He called those possessive lenses, a means to differentiate himself and become the James that wanted to kill and destroy. It was his way of dissociating himself from his action. Man had an alter ego and it just took fucking... <laughs> Man, I had an older ego and it just took some contacts. <laughs> are those contacts tinted a little red or are they black? They're solid black. They're so solid. Color solid. this clear uh, black. How well can you see through them? Not at all because my, my normal contacts are prescription. Okay, how opaque? Yeah, but there are... Last time I looked into it because it was something that I was looking to for costuming reasons. Um... I noticed that a chunk of the black ones, you like, there was a very limited vision for some of them, which is just like, man, so basically they're just for pictures. They're literally just for like photo shoots. And if you really want to be in character, but you're basically blind. Are they or translucent or transparent? Oh, well, they have the hole where the retina is so you can see, but I can't see because it wasn't prescription content. Okay. There is a persistent but I think the ones that I'm talking about though literally turn your entire eyeball black. He did not. Which is kind of cool. Did the Batman story have anything to do with There's the also white ones Batman as well. Premiere or not? Uh, the main reason was cuz I knew it would be a blockbuster hit so there'd be a lot of people there. There are other blockbuster hits. This is a really big blockbuster uh, and, and fills the auditorium. Right. Uh, do you think in retrospect that there was anything non-coincidental? About your picking that blockbuster instead of Avatar? Oh, it God. was unconscious. You've tried to figure out unconscious things before. What do you think? That it bears some resemblance. You think the resemblance is coincidental? I'm not sure. Okay. There's a similar selfie. That might be the one I'm thinking of. And that's this one. Do you remember that one? Yep. Tell me about that one. Uh, What's that guy? It also looks devilish. Anything make it look additionally devilish to you? Uh, it looks like a bored motherfucker with lenses. That's what it looks like to me. <laughs> Someone with too much free time and access to lens. <laughs> you remember what I kind of hate right those kind of questions. I get that he's intentionally asking because he wants to know what his response and his joke. thoughts are. But yeah. like, bruh, I see that and I see edgy DeviantArt uh, user. <laughs> Am I wrong? How did they pick up the word Joker in reference to Batman. Oh, uh, well, they call me the Joker. Is that one of the ways that you're known at the jail as the Joker? Oh, uh, yep. When did folks start calling you the Joker? Oh, uh, I don't know, like shortly after. It sounds like an interesting nickname. I remember seeing Lots pictures of, of him in court jail. with the While weird fucking ass hairstyle and ha James hair color that he had. loud techno music on his wireless headphones. He claimed he didn't want to hear the cries of his victims, so it wouldn't be personal. How about the sound? What did all that sound like? Well, I had my music in to drown out the sound. How loud do you have to be? It just... How loud did the headset have to be for him to not hear the movie theater or any of the sounds of his victims? I didn't hear much. How high was the music turned up? To its full volume. Full volume. So what could you hear besides the music? I don't remember hearing the gunshots. And you don't recall what the music was, but just that it was a well, techno. Well, just that it was playing. And it was techno? Yeah. James even detailed his brutal attack to Dr. Reed. Apparently you didn't know or want to know any of the people in the theater. No, I kept it very impersonal. As you were carrying out the shooting, you were wearing a gas mask the whole time? Uh, yes. How well could you see out of the mask? 
not well because there were lights behind the theater, which were actually brighter than in the theater. So I had to go from a brightly lit area to a darkly lit area. And when I had to have the gas mask with scratches in it, I tried to remove the scratches, but they weren't coming out. Was the movie still playing when you were shooting? Uh, yes. I wasn't watching it, though. I understand. Uh, did that <laughs> throw light? I wasn't watching and shooting. You were shooting it? Um, no. It threw light at the very front where there were no people sitting. James kept it very impersonal because, again, he thinks of humanity in the way he thinks of Brock Lane. However, the fact that he too measures to drown out the Fucking screams, iPod, cries, dude. and gunshots could be because he knew that whatever ounce of humanity he has in him would likely be shaken by hearing the sounds of death and suffering all around him. Then you come around the curtain or around whatever the partition is and toss the canister? Yeah. Then I raised the shotgun and saw that people were getting up in like the back left corner, so I like shot up that direction. I don't remember any of the other shots, so the shotgun. So you shot in that direction. Do you know whether you hit anything? I heard a scream. What happened next? And I shot all my shotgun rounds and tossed it on the floor. You shot how many times toward the folks in the upper left? I think the shotgun held five or six shells. So yeah. I shot all six of them. Emptied in that, in that direction, okay. And I uh, threw the gun down and switched to the AR-15. I don't remember where I shot fucking those. Fucking hell, either, man. This is... Two people who tried to run I've, away. I've fucking talked like about this before, but, like, right. certain away, guns I just don't think the public need to, yeah, needs access to. I'm sorry. I understand, and I can even agree with the fact of, like, oh, for self-defense self reasons, like, reasons we should still have access to certain things, or for hunting, because that is a sport. I get it, and I even respect that to a certain degree. You do not need a fucking AR. You do not need an AR. Like, come on. And afterwards, four people, I think, carried a guy out, and they got out the back exit, the emergency exit. Tell me how you fire an AR with the gas mask. Uh, you put it up to your shoulder and start sh shooting. Can you sight down the barrel with the gas mask on? I had a scope on it, but I didn't use it. I just shot randomly. What do you see? Uh, bullets going towards seats. I thought he says bullets that he's shooting randomly, but he seat. also said that he uh, regretted no. shooting a kid and people, also didn't aim for any people kid. People are hiding behind the seats. About 65 or 70 of them obviously went toward people, didn't they? So, uh, yeah, I assume it went through the seats and hit them. Really? Yeah. How many folks do you suppose were hit directly and how many of the bullets went through the seats and hit them? Maybe like four or five directly and then the rest were behind the seat hits. Really? But I, I can't remember seeing it. The shotgun. You were shooting BB shot. Yeah. You think that would go through a theater seat? I fired that one first. So that was the four or five, which were kind of at people. Okay. The AR, the loads that you had, would they go through theater seats? I don't know. Those, I didn't test it. It would be pretty hard to test it. Did you plan for it to go through seats? I thought they would go through seats because of rifle rounds. It's strange that James is claiming Jesus he shot at Christ, the seats dude. rather than the people. This isn't at all consistent with his thinking in regards to increasing his own value by killing others. But the plan was that you would shoot them while they were running down the highway, or, or do I misunderstand? No, the plan was to contain them so they wouldn't start running, but I'd left that highway because I was kind of blocking the left aisle way and the emergency exit. So the only exit would be that <coughs> right aisle way. So why did you leave them that exit? Because it was far away from me and they wouldn't attack me, come down, run and attack me. So the thought was they would go there rather than attack you? Right, they'd run away. Kind of a pressure valve, I guess. Yeah, a pressure release valve. Those that did run that way, did you shoot at them or no? Yeah. Hit some of them? No, I don't believe so. I think there were three shots, though, that <coughs> went through the wall and into Theater 8. Were you trying to? I didn't know it would do that. Were you trying to shoot? Yes, I was aiming at them. Okay. Is there anything else about the experience inside the theater that sticks in your mind that you remember vividly? This one guy in the front row was smiling. I thought it was kind of odd that he was smiling. See. This was when I was going to leave, going towards the exit, and just looked back and saw that he was smiling. 
I think it's probably a stress reaction that he did. As far as you know, did he look alive? Yeah, he was alive and moving a little bit. He was Just alive and moving a little bit. James by his car in what? the parking lot of the theater, but he shares an interesting detail about his thought process following the shooting with Dr. Reed. Why were you outside the theater and not inside the theater? I left the theater uh, at that point and went out the back. Had you finished? Or were you getting ready to go back in? Or? No, at that point, I just decided I was done. So it wasn't that they interrupted you? You had decided that you were done? No, I could have kept on shooting. Well, the magazine jammed, so my main weapon uh, malfunctioned. But you had three others. I had two others on me, and I would have had to reload the shotgun and shake some extra time. So essentially, I only had the one handgun. So if the cops hadn't come up to you, what would you have been doing? I would have driven away. That night, James Whoa. Holmes killed 12 people and left 58 injured with gunshot wounds. Jesus Did you have any Christ. thoughts about the victims, the people that, that is were shot so many seven? people. No, I just heard the number. So you had 12 people that Over died 50 and 58 that were just affected. And you've got to... It was new information. I didn't what? know that. While well, I was in the theater, you had so many people there that were either relatives or friends, or like you had so um, many people that were connected to each other. They were just chilling because it was a movie. The wounded, so there were a bunch of strangers there for sure, but like you had like familiar no. situations, like the interviewees. Or, During his imprisonment, you know, James was put under psychological What the fuck? Put the nips away. Put the nips away. I don't want to see it. Guilty by cause of insanity. That's better. The court reasoned that he was struggling with severe mental health conditions, but was legally. Same. They said you could recite the alphabet backwards. Oh, they asked me to uh, to do that again. Can you do what? it? Yeah. What the fuck? See, I can't do that. I have to stop. I can do it. I have to stop and think about it. Like, what the fuck? Clearly, James has enjoyed the what attention the he's received fuck? during the course of his interview. He is happy. We just witnessed one of the very few times he's exhibited any emotion during his sessions. James was found guilty on 24 counts of first-degree murder, Christ. 140 counts of attempted first-degree murder, one count of possessing illegal explosives, and a sentence enhancement of a crime I thought only 12 violence. people died. If he was charged with 24 that counts, James wouldn't that mean 24 people was died? In wait and ambushed his victims during the shooting, which constituted as aggravating factors. I'm confusion. On August 26th, James Holmes was sentenced to 12 life imprisonment sentences without parole and a maximum of 3,318 additional Jesus years Christ, on attempted murder bro. and explosives possession convictions. Yeah, that motherfucker. After the jury failed to arrive at a they conclusion rounded about up. his death sentence. <laughs> what? Right, why did you kill the whole world was the delusion. Jonathan Bruh. T. Blunk, age 26. Alexander Aww. J. Boyk, 18. Jesus Christ. Jesse Childress, 29. Mm. Gordon W. Cowden, 51. W. <laughs> Jessica Gowie, 24. Jesus, John Thomas man. Larimer, 27. Matthew McQuinn, 27. Michaela Medic, 23. Aww. Veronica Moser Sullivan, Jesus Christ. 6. Alex Sullivan, 27. Alexander Teves, 24. Rebecca Ann Wingo, 32. All died that night. At 6... Veronica was the youngest victim. Jeez. I always think of Veronica that she's been a part of this whole healing process and bringing the paper paint Veronica's together close to relative. Because she's How close? in a different place now. And her Why wouldn't you just say child, auntie like, or innocent, fucking whatever? You know, children view the world with such innocence and hope and love and love everyone they meet. Like, she made a friend of everyone she meets. And... To me, the message is that's how we should all be all the time. Like, children, you know, see the beauty in the world and see the beauty in others like she did, like all children do. So often, like, when serendipities happen or someone mentions Veronica, I will text or call Ashley about it. And she Aww. loves hearing those stories. I, I have to say, Ashley, she is just, even before this happened, she's just such a humble, sweet person. A mom like her would have a beautiful child like Ashley because Ashley's beautiful too. And Ashley's a fighter too. And it's like every time I hear her making progress, like she's going back to school again for the third Jeez. time, I'm so, so proud of her for not giving up. There like you when go. When it first happened, 
I was just like, she is my hero just for getting out of bed in the morning. That's you right. Know? After the trial, on the very last day, I got to hug the shooter's parents. What? And that to me was a moment of like what? such forgiveness that now I don't hold a negative feeling. Now that I think about I it, they it, didn't like mention much about so the parents. Much, but it's one of those I would love I to love... know how the parents reacted throughout this entire thing. The parents of the shooter. Like... Did they see this? The only mention of the parents I think we've heard throughout this entire thing was just the school contact. One of the people in the school contacting at least one of his parents, the mom, and basically getting told this, that this is just how he acts. This is just how what he says and does when it comes to the whole, like, oh, yeah, haha, want to kill other people. Like, I would love to know what his actual setting was, like, growing up, if it was average. I would love to know what how the parents reacted throughout this entire court process because that's always a thing i would love to know that and i know that can be kind of like super nosy when you're dealing with a situation like that because people should also have a right to their privacy but like i'm curious i'm curious yeah. man like it's okay to because it always gets weird when you're talking about sh school shooters or just anyone who takes anyone's life or commits massive acts of violence when you're talking about like close family relatives i i find it interesting to see what the reactions are and also actually like know more about how their childhood was and like because that's a part of how someone becomes something usually it it has some type of play in this situation in the aftermath of the incident the survivors started the 720 foundation and gather in yeah Ohio, colorado well i guess uh, yeah i don't know I don't know. Like I said, I just her mentioning the parents just had me go. Oh yeah, they really haven't. I expected them to like bring up the parents at one time or another, but they really didn't. In this documentary, they didn't really bring up the parents too much or barely at all. And I don't think they really brought up his early like young adult life. Like other than like he wasn't a super social person. There's plenty of people that suffer from depression or from you know antisocial have antisocial personality disorder or have other things going on that don't have a ton of friends that don't end up mass murdering people. So like I'm I would love to know what his home life was. I would love to know what was going on in the parents' lives like as he was a child and when he was older and like every year for I want to know the date that changed their lives forever. The memories Jeez. of the deceased continue to linger on in the hearts of their families and communities. We would like to extend our <laughs> what utmost the hell? gratitude to all of those Not who spoke big. with us and shared their stories. Aww. That's the end of that one. Yeah, no, I'm actually kind of curious. I'm not going to lie. And I, there's issues. Like I said, everyone has a right to their privacy, right? Even when this kind of thing happens or it happened because it's been years. But, like, I'm just... Oh, there's a lot of people that'll pry and see what's, like... Let me see. I'm looking it up right now just to see if there's anything. Everything I'm seeing that pops up said that the parents say that they didn't know what was going to happen. Jeez. Ooh, what's this? July 21st, 2017. Five years later, Aurora Movie Theater Shooter's Mother Wonders If Only. Five years have passed since my son James Holmes walked into a movie theater in Aurora, Colorado and opened fire. Twelve people are deceased, three are paralyzed, and many others live with disability, chronic pain, and emotional tra trauma. Prior to July 2012, my son had never harmed anyone and had no criminal record. After the shooting, my son was diagnosed by many mental health professionals with varying diagnose, but diagnoses, along with schizophrenia, along with the schizophrenia spectrum, schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, schizotypal disorder. He completed interviews, psychological exams, brain imaging, all done after the shooting, all too late to prevent the, his deterioration, all too late to stop him from carrying out a horrible act driven by psychosis, obsession, and delusion. What the hell? <laughs> no. I have since learned hard lessons haunted by the idea that the shooting could have been prevented if I had only educated myself so I could have recognized sy symptoms and taken my son for diagno diagnosis and treatment. Every parent should know that mental illness affects all populations. Regardless of age, economic status, race, or religion, and every parent needs to know that mental illness can be present in children, teenagers, and young adults. Knowing the warning signs 
and knowing what to do. So she's kind of blaming the schools in this. Because they're not equipped to discern subtle signs of mental illness. Here's what I have to say. I am I hate to be that motherfucker, but that's the parents. Like, yes, yeah, schools should also notice when things are up. But I feel like it's on the parents to also keep up with their children and, like, do the things. According to this, I'm going to share the link to this. According to this, she also did take him to therapy a little bit when he was in his younger schooling years. But, like, again, I just... I just want to know, like, how that fucking phone call went between the school and everything else. And I would... I, I would just, I, I would love to be a fly on the wall just to know, like, how his early years were. What the fuck? That's messed up. That's the uh, article I was reading out loud from. But that that looks like it's it's directly with the mom. I don't know about the dad as much. But no, for those, for the survivors going through therapy and stuff, a part of that might actually be the process of sort of, um, not harboring anger or resentment towards the parents. That's an actual thing that a lot of uh, therapists will do with trauma-related things because it's part of, I don't want to say getting over it, but it's a part of g getting through things, processing things. It's weird, but it's, it is a part of it. And it does work for a chunk of people because, I mean, it's a process. <laughs> so the fact that she was able to and it was a positive thing for her, that's awesome. But, like, I that just... I'm surprised that this didn't touch on anything. Like, absolutely anything. That makes me think there's probably not a lot of stuff about them actually publicly online. At least pre this happening. I'm sure after this happening, you have a ton of articles and a ton of people, like, bringing up their names and, like, talking about stuff. But I kind of would love to know, again, just what was going on before that point. Because from this documentary, it sounds like the school was aware that some shit was off about him and tried to contact parents. And, I mean, like, the... I think it was a teacher. That one teacher in there said uh, she she spoke to the mother and according to the mother that was just how he behaved. And I'm just like, that's not normal. <laughs> that like, There's a spectrum of like acceptable behaviors and like you should be worried when your child starts joking about, heavily joking about or bringing up, you know, I, I wish I could kill a lot of people. Like that's not, that's not normal commentary, bro. That is not normal. Yo, what the hell? That is all I had planned for today, though. That is everything. I moved the chat for end screen as well. Yeah, boy. I knew it would be a longer video. I think I, I, I think I did pretty good. I don't think I paused it too much. I, I knew that that video wasn't really going to be super exciting to me. I mean, certain aspects of it were interesting, but I'm kind of surprised. Like I said, the biggest thing is like early, early, uh, like adolescent years and, um, anything having to do with parents or close fam family weren't really touched on. Uh, there was like the fact that he was now an actual adult. He was going through school and all these things. And like his parents or his family, his closest family lived like states away, but I would have loved a deeper dive into, like, that aspect of things and not just that evening. Because while that evening is definitely important because things did happen and there are victims and there's people that were touched by that, it would be kind of cool. Or not cool, just interesting to kind of know about all that. Because, like I said, I feel like, yes, he obviously had a ton of mental illness going on and that was a huge factor. That and his intellect, I feel like, was a big factor. But... There's something to be argued about, like, developmental, like, situations that you're put in. Your, the environment you're raised in, the interactions you have with your close family members that kind of help form you when you're younger, too. And I feel like that probably has some type of role in it as well. <laughs> and, like, it's cool they were able to, like, he's open to, like, talk to someone openly after he's been caught and after he's, you know, in jail and after he's highly medicated. But that, again, for me, brings up the whole he's highly medicated. So I wouldn't take everything that he says, like, fully at face value. You know what I mean? Because this is also, in retrospect, this is after the thing happened and this is while he's highly medicated. I just don't know how much I would... 
like put weight on that. What the hell? Put my stickers off my table. Ah. But yeah, that was interesting to say the least. I never, I don't think I ever like actually sat down and looked at all the details of that case because it made the news a while ago, obviously when it happened. And I, at the time, because of news outlets and stuff, I obviously, I knew about like the amount of weapons that was used. I knew about the thing at his house where he had like bombs and stuff set up. I knew about all that because it kind of made the rounds, but I didn't know about his intellect for the longest and like his personal deeds. I did not know about that. I did not know what his motivation was. I think I remember at some point the news basically saying that he just wanted to injure as many people as possible, which I, I mean, that's, that's basically the vibe is just that that was a good setting and he decided that would be the place because it's dark and because of everything else. So one thing that did strike me was I didn't remember when the shooting actually started. Uh, from like the news coverage I saw and detail, random details and bits and pieces I saw like on Twitter and other other social media sites and stuff after it happened and like while the court stuff was going down I always assumed that it started like at the beginning of the movie and technically it did but it was a half an hour into the movie which you th if you think about it is that much worse because you're focusing on the screen the lights are all dimmed the fucking movie is loud as shit. Like, that is probably the worst time for something like that to happen as someone in the audience, as someone who is a victim. That fucking sucks. <laughs> what the hell, hypnotic? What the hell? <sighs> the only thing I have plans to do tonight, I have to end stream. I'm gonna eat some food. I might play some more Fortnite because I kind of want to. I don't know. I'll see what fam was doing as well real quick when I go to get food and kind of make my decision based on that. But more than likely, I'm going to hop back on Fortnite, play a little bit of Fortnite, eat dinner. Uh, I do want to either tonight or tomorrow morning. What the fuck, zombie? I think people had more pressing concerns. I think they had like actual like wounds that they had to tend and shit. Like, what the fuck? Um... Between tonight and tomorrow morning, I'm going to look at all of the suggestions there for songs. I'm going to at least start to put together a new le a new edited list for the just chatting and for when I want basically music in the background for the more just chatting type sections of my streaming. That VOD viewers cannot hear. This is so sad. Because I like the one that I currently have, but it was very much just like to test the waters. And I don't think there's enough music in it. And there's a couple of songs I don't like in it, so... Yeah. What the fuck? What the hell? Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the victims there just do not go to movie theaters anymore. I feel like that's valid, you know? You've had so much trauma and so much happen to you inside one of those buildings. That, you know? I will say, within the last few years, we really haven't... I feel like more people watch stuff on streaming services than like actually at theaters between covid and just streaming services kind of dominating to a certain degree yeah, there's that too there, there's also that but <laughs> i'm just saying in general like the mass the masses of people the general population i feel like are, are more like i've had just i've had conversations with co-workers basically since uh, COVID happened where I'd mentioned, oh, I wish I could see this in the theater, but I don't have the time to, or, you know, something along those lines. And they're just like, nah, I'm going to stream that shit. I'm going to get comfy in my house. I'm going to, you know, make my favorite snack. I'm not going to worry about someone sitting in front of me being loud or sitting behind me being loud. I'll get to pause it when I have to take a piss, like that kind of shit. It still is cool to go to the theater for the experience. For me, it's superhero stuff usually is the stuff that like I want to see in theaters. Um, but it is cool that we do live in a world where you don't have to do that to enjoy content. You can literally make your own living room a little, a little home theater, even if it's the the ghetto version of it. Even if it's just a bunch of pillows and a bunch of blankets and like your favorite snack and a streaming service or. A definitely legal site, you know. <laughs> we live in the future. 
I just think it's sad overall and why I don't touch on like shooting stuff at, in general when I look at true crime stuff. Um, I just think it's sad that we've reached a point where it's, it's almost, I know it's like an online joke that like, Amer like oh yeah, guns, America, but like it's just, we. The f I can't get over the dysto- it's, it feels dystopian. Like the fact that you literally do have like regular drills in schools and shit, like People should be worried about learning there. They should not be worried about the very real fact that, you know, something might happen. That- that's so fucked up. What the hell? <laughs> what the hell, Tommy? <laughs> that's fucked up! Ugh. Uh, I don't have anything planned streaming wise for the next three days. I might pop on basically after work at some point and play game. I'm not sure. Um, Thursday, I'll post my schedule for the next seven days. Uh, we're going to at least start Detroit Become Human. I'm trying to think of the other, other stuff I want to play. I want to try, which I might actually do tomorrow, next day, or the following day. I would like to try to play Cult of the Lamb. I still have Parasocial to play. And I have the last fears to fathom. So, I mean, honestly, I'm probably going to pop on one of the evenings in the next three days and play a game. I don't know what. It'll either be called the Lamb, Parasocial, or the last fears to fathom. It'll be something. I had a couple people come in with PCs that fucking die when gaming. Got an excuse to play Fallout 4 at work two days in a row. Epic. Epic. What the fuck, zombie? This is not true. Again, I don't work around your schedule. I work around my schedule. If I was a full-time streamer, I would probably bend a little bit more, but like... Brother. What? You are making this up. There's no fucking shot. You are absolutely making this up. You are making this up. You are... You are. No. No. I just looked it up. Because <laughs> I wanted to know what the fuck. No. <laughs> it looks like some shit I would play while high. Not gonna lie. <laughs> it looks gay as hell. <laughs> what the hell is me? What the fuck. Next week, for scheduling, we're going to have meme stream, and I'm probably going to start Detroit Become Human. I'm not going to promise anything else in terms of gaming. We'll see what happens. Um, I'm trying to remember. Listen. Yeah, I, I'm not g good at keeping track of days. <laughs> Arcus exists. Okay. It is gay. Their entire Steam profile is dedicated. Hell yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. What the hell? What the fuck? I'm just double checking my schedule. Uh. Yeah, so for the next three days, 12 to 9 is like normal. Friday, I'm off like normal. Um, Sunday, Easter. So, not this week, but technically next. Wait. My brain is broken right now. Yeah, so next week, Sunday, the 31st, Easter Sunday, they have me working 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. So I'll probably be gaming in the evening, as long as I don't have a massive headache. And then I have the 1st of April off. So that's epic. My schedule basically stays the same. They've thrown in a different shift, but it's a very similar shift. So my work is having me work either 12 to 9 or 11 something to 8 something. Because of where I work in the building. I'm fine with both shifts. I've already had a conversation with my boss's boss who makes a schedule. And I'm just like, the only thing that I don't want is morning shifts. I don't do mornings because I'm up till like 4 a.m. Which my one of my direct managers is the same. He's like, I don't do morning shifts because I'm a night owl. And I'm usually up between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Right? There better be some left for me, fucker. Oh, yeah. It's got beer in it. It's got beer. There's something wrong with it when you give it to me and you know I'm gonna have to get your similar <laughs> games to it. What what do you mean? Some people are gay! It's cooked beer. Calm yourself. It's good. It's good. It got that beer flavor. 
No, I made, I said at the beginning of the stream, but I made cabbage. It basically glorified cabbage stew. It was, you take um, vegan brat sausages, bratwurst sausages, you cut them up, you fry them, you add some onions, you fry those, you add cabbage, ton of cabbage, you wilt that down, you add seasoning, and then you add garlic, you cook that for a few more minutes, you add beer, you deglaze it for a few minutes to cook out the alcohol and everything, then you add uh, potatoes that are peeled and like cut up, and then you add chicken stock, and then you just let that stew and do its thing. It smelled really good. I just, I didn't want to be eating soup up here while I'm trying to enjoy true crime or look at true crime. <sighs> what the hell? Cooked beer can be really good. Depends on what it's with. <laughs> what the hell? Me, God. Yo. I was gonna hop on Fortnite, meme God. I'm not streaming it, but I was gonna hop on Fortnite. How late are you staying up, gamers? I don't have work tomorrow until... I don't have to leave the house until, like, 11.30. I don't want to see the gay... The gay... <laughs> Wait, I don't want to see the gay... The gay on your desktop. At least make it cool gay. Obama making out with Preston Garvey. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> nice. What are you up to? Fair enough. No, I was, we were doing true crime, so I'm just ending the stream. I was gonna, I think I'm gonna go stretch my legs, grab some food, and then come back up here and play some Fortnite. See if any of the boys are online. What the hell? What the fuck? Hypnotic, it's not my fault you would work today in my schedule's ass compared to yours. It's not my fault. <laughs> I've already basically been told that I, 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 there's no way I'm getting weekends off because retail, which I'm fine with, but it sucks a little bit. I'm kind of glad that I got evenings. <laughs> what the fuck? That's the thing, though. Hell yeah. That's the thing, though. I don't mind catering schedules towards buddies online when I, like, play with them and shit. Zombie just comes in, bullies me, and then leaves. Like, <laughs> Zombie doesn't play video games. That's why Hypnotic's a mod. Hypnotic's a cool guy. He games with them. Uh, can you stop decorating with my things? No. Touching my fidgets and my spray bottle? Is that my activator? Yeah, God damn it. You gave it away. No. It's boring. It's not even a sticker on it. You only stick around for very specific streams. But that's my point. You come in, you, which is fine. You come in, you, <laughs> you fucking insult me or insult the fact that I'm late or insult something. And then you leave and you also talk about K-pop. That's the zombie experience. I don't know if the mic picked that up. Zombie understands what they're saying, though. Okay. Zombie actually does speak the language. He didn't, I think, at first. He learned. So, <laughs> it's still kind of weird, but... That's so sad, Zombie. You should play games. You should be a gamer. That would be epic. What the fuck? This is bullshit. No... <laughs> That's a statement. <laughs> what the hell? How the fuck? <laughs> Zombie has accumulated many virginities. <laughs> Just top text, bottom text. <laughs> what the fuck? I. Uh, I'll probably try to have the vod for this one. I think up. I don't know. Within the next, I try to go within the next like twenty four to forty hours when things aren't happening. I don't, I don't know. I don't fucking, I already said, I don't fucking cater. I have Fridays and I have Mondays off, so it'll happen on either Friday or Monday. I can't make any promises, dog. I have my own work schedule and family schedule and everything. 
E o full on? Moon is just watching me. This is uncomfy. Watching you all doing that. <laughs> what the hell? Hilari hilarious game, kill all the robots. I thought they're okay though, I'm confused. I don't I literally do not know anything about Detroit Become Human. I have specifically avoided spoilers because I do want to play it. I've seen like the occasional fan art on my Twitter feed. Of people simping over specific characters, and that's really it. I think seeing one of the characters in a maid dress doesn't really tell me what's in the game. It just tells me that person really wants to see that motherfucker in a maid dress, which I mean valid, but like a little weird. Yeah. I literally haven't seen. <laughs> it's not willingly, it's people in my feed. Uh, he is definitely not a maid. <laughs> he is definitely not a maid. I'm willing to bet he is definitely not a maid. <laughs> he can rock a maid outfit, but he is not a maid. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, where are those main services at? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's people I follow that are th that are thirsty on Twitter. Cause I follow actual artists, and I also just fa uh, follow <laughs> gamers who are very horny. <laughs> yeah, it's a mix. But the gamers that are horny tend to have the money and ability to play games when they're released, so I get horny fan art. That pops up. Honestly, over the last little bit, I'm, I don't spend... In, I, I spend barely any time on Twitter. I don't call it X. That's stupid. I don't like the format of the actual site. And I only really am still on it to share my streams and to see when other people are streaming slash other things are happening with content creators I enjoy. Only reason. I don't want to call it X, though. I, I I wanted to call it the Burp App. Because it was the Burp App. I could have guessed that. Zombie. That bitch. Alrighty, I'm not raiding out. Uh, I'm ending stream. I gotta go grab food, and then I'm gonna hop on Fortnite. I'm probably gonna boot up the game and then go grab food. Um... Yeah, this has been interesting. It was just as depressing as I thought it was going to be, and I'm a little annoyed that I didn't go into, like, his actual, like, adolescent backstory or anything having to do with his parents. That's a, That was a weird choice. I, I don't know any specifics about, like, I'm going to have to, I'm kind of going to want to do some digging over the next, like, day or two just to see if maybe they, they have specifically stayed out of the spotlight and specifically have asked to not be talked to about this kind of thing. But I'm curious. I'm a curious boy. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell? That's a PS1 Hagrid moment right there. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for listening. Thank you for lurking. Thank you for being here. It means a ton to me. I'm not going to raid out just because we were doing true crime and I don't feel like raiding out to anyone else. If we were doing a game, I might pick like the game and raid out to someone random. I don't know. I'm just going to bow out peacefully. Until next stream, friends. Goodbye.